Good day, good afternoon, good whatever. John Little here with another Tech Bear tip. A lot of people, are, we're doing bigger paintings now, and so are you. And a lot of our reference materials are still like uh, Guardian Monarch of the Glen here. He's a 12 by 12, and I have been approached that says I want to do a 16 by 20. So we have a couple of issues with that, but first off, how do we get there? What do we have to do? I want to trace the image on. I don't want to grid it on. In our resources, currently, we have Ginger's Traceable file. You can click on that. It opens up a PDF. And you can print that out. It will not print out as a 12 by 12, though, because most people don't have a 12 by 12 printer. So what do you do with this? Well, I'm going to show you. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and save this. Now let's just make ourselves a working folder here, out here. And we'll call it Glenn. That's what I called the guy anyways. And we're just going to put that right in there. We'll come back to that in a second. The other file we have available for you is the original. On this particular one, we have the original reference, and you can get that. So you click on that. And that's a PDF, I mean a JPEG. We look up here in the address bar and it says JPEG. What do you do with that? Well, you do a right click, save image as. And again, we'll save that in the Glen right there. So now we have our two images. Now, first thing we gotta do is take that PDF and convert it into a PNG or a JPEG. What's the difference? PNG is a higher quality. The file size will be bigger, but it's a higher quality than a JPEG. So I'm going to start with a PNG. I'm going to say start with a PNG because that should be able to do it with no problem. It says upload a file. What file do you want to upload? Well, we're going to go find on our desktop, our Glenn folder, our PDF. And it goes converts it. Now, it's going to download in what's called a zip file, ZIP, which is a compressed file. Um, it doesn't matter either way what it is, because we can still work with it. Now, what we have to do with that, though, is Get into that directory here, which I'm going to bring up here in a second. There we go. Pop it back down. Okay. So here's the PNG file that's been zipped. On an Apple device, you just double click it, it'll unzip it into a folder, and that's the PNG file. That's simple. On a PC, you can open it up like we've done here, but you need to extract it, okay? A Mac, an Apple will automatically do it. A PC, you have to say extract it. Because where do you want to put it? Put it right there. So basically you put it in the same folder that we were just in. See up here it says extract. All right, so we're going to go back to the Glenn folder. And you can see we have the PDF to ping file folder. And in that folder is this folder. And inside of that is the file. Okay. So this is Ginger's image from a PDF to a PNG that can now use in an imaging program. Now, the person who wants to do this says they want to create a 16 by 20. 12 by 12 happens to be square. 12 inches by 12 inches is square. So you have to decide what are you going to do. This is Photo P. This is available through the internet free of charge, photop.com. Click a new project. You can say what do you want to do. I'm going to make a 16 by 20. You can keep the DPI at 72 and just say create. That is with the size of your canvas. 
Now, the next decision you're going to have to make is do you want to make it horizontal or vertical? So now what we're going to do is under File, we are going to go under Open and Place. You're not going to open. You're going to open and place it into this document. So we will go grab Ginger File right there. It's loading up. There it is. So now you have to decide, are you going to make up the rest of the mountain on the right and the left? Are you going to finish the scene? Or are you going to stuff it all on the one side and you do the, all of this? Or do you want to distort the image and just stretch it? Because you can stretch it. Glenn looks a little funny now. I probably would not do that myself. I would probably keep it back. I'm going to go back to 100%, back to this. And then you have to decide that, okay, I'm going to paint these in. I will be creative and paint these in. So what we're going to have to do now, because I want to show you how to make this into, well, you know, the other choice you can do is go vertical, which might be easier. So what we're going to do now is, Let's just open up a new project. I'm going to 16 by 20, and I'm going to go 16 wide by 20 high. We want to do that one. And again, file, open place. We'll put Glenn in there again. And this might be an easier solution, because you just fill up the whole thing with sky. And that's making not the best of layouts if you fill the top up with sky. But that's the easiest thing. So you have to decide. This isn't hard to do. I mean, you're just going to continue the mountain. Just bring it right over like this. Take this guy over like that. Put the sky in. Put the rest of this guy in. Put some more grass in here. Same thing on this side. This would not be hard to do. I would keep it in this format. I would keep it as a horizontal. And that's what we're going to do in this one. Now, what I'm going to do for the background is I'm just going to pop some color in there so it can determine where it is. And this particular program, it works in what's called layers. The background layer is locked. That's the white. The guardian, that's this guy. If you can turn the eyeball on and off, turns him on and off. So I'm going to sit down here. And we're going to place this little piece of paper down here, down in the lower right corner. Click that, and that's a layer. And I can make that layer, I can paint, paint on that layer. As a matter of fact, why don't we be so brave and to clone, is this cloner? This is a Photoshop, yeah, it's a Photoshop look lookalike. There, here's your brush. I am using the brace key. The brace or bracket key can increase or decrease the size of your brush. If I tell it I want to clone something, he's going to say, wait a minute, you got to tell it Alt X, you got to tell it what you want to clone. So I'm going to have to hold down the Alt key, click this. Oh, I got to be on the image. Click on the image. That one, clone stores by holding, holding or K, and click on the image. So I should. Select the clone source by holding Alt. That says Alt on my keyboard, or K. Let's do the K. It wanted a K. Oh, it has to rasterize it because it's a smart image. So this is going to come up and bring that over. There we go. Oop. You see a little X over there? That's what he's copying. What's ever in that X, that's what it's going to copy. So if you need to relocate it, apparently use the K key instead of the, let's go down here. Let's grab this one.
But you get the idea. You can sit here and actually do this if you want to, to get a, a sense of what you're going to create. It certainly is easier in Photoshop. Because Photoshop's been updated and does all kinds of stuff now. But you get the idea. All right, we're going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and go back to this layer. I'm just going to put a color into that layer just so we know what it is. And there should be a paint bucket. And what colors are going to be? It's going to be red. Not my first choice. Let's pick a blue. Would be better. There we go. All right, so that's what we're going to paint. Now, we have to save this. So we're going to go to File, Export As. Now we have a 16 by 20. Your preference would be a PNG if it's not too big. It says it's only going to be a 3 meg file. That's not too big. We'll take it. So I'm going to Save As. And we will put it up in the Glenn folder, and we're going to call it 16 by 20. 16 by 20 Glenn. I put my period back in there for the PNG part. All right. So when you're taking an image that is not proportional to what you're doing, you have to make a decision. We come up with our designs for a specific reason. They don't all translate from square to rectangle, vertical to horizontal. This particular one will. It's not a big deal to do this one. I'd probably offset them just a little bit to the right here. Now that I'm looking at it, I put a little bit more space on the left. Because this tushy is close here as compared to this side. So you got to look at his rack here. So I bring it over to about like here. Just a little bit. That's all right. Now we're going to go into Rasturbator. Raster. And I don't remember was the dot something dot net. Now, I'm going to make this super simple for you now. Because I've been playing with it more and it's really, really simple. And I'm hoping to make it so for you. You're going to upload the image that you just created. You created a 16 by 20. I'm going to bring that in, upload it. It's going to show it to you. And it's going to be very simple. You're going to be, you're going to say to yourself, this is so simple. First thing you got to do, if you're in the U.S. or use inches, change the inches over here on the right. Go up here to your paper size and change that also to U.S. letter. If you're going to use letter size paper or if you have legal, one or the other. If you want to do portrait or landscape on this particular one, we'll start with portrait and see what it does. Right now it says four sheets of paper and the actual print size, the actual image size is basically 30 by 25 right here. You don't care about this margin size. That doesn't matter. This is your final print size. Okay. This is what you're trying to determine. You want this to say 20 wide, 16 high. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a landscape and just see what that does. And that makes it a 40 by 32 with four sheets. And I'm thinking it might be better in that mode. So now the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come back over here to the output size. I'm just going to put a 2 in there. Then I'm going to look over here and see what I got. Why did I determine a 2? Well, it had a 4. That's what it defaults to. 40 by 32, I want a 16 by 20. I'm thinking, well, that's just half. Let's start with a 2. It's 2.39 by 16.31. If I So we're slightly big. So if I go 1.98, I am now 20.19. So I go 1.96. 19.99 to 15.99, I'm done. That's how simple it is. It's going to take six sheets of paper in this particular format. See how you have this little baby one down here at the bottom. You have one, two, three. Little baby guy right down here. So you go, okay, maybe portrait would be a way, better way to go. All right. 
So we just remember 1.96. Let's go to portrait size. Okay, so let's go back to four because that's what defaults to. And so we have the 20 has got to come over here. So that's about a third of that. So if we start with three, what do we get? Three is 23, too much. Two is going to be too little. 2.8 is 21. Again, I'm just I'm just watching this number over here. So all you have to do, you don't care what the output size number is. It makes no difference to you. 2.5, 2.6. Ah, I'll take 2.6, slightly big. 2.59, same size as the other guy. Six sheets. You don't have a little baby one to fool with. This would be a better way to go. This is a good way right here. That's it. You're done. How long did that take? This is one of my shortest videos yet. No effect. So you have your image. No effect. Nothing here. Do nothing. Continue. And then complete six page poster. It's done. It's going to download. It's going to ask you where you want to save it. And we're going to save it right here. And we're going to call it 16 by 20. Traceable. There we go. So that's it. You go really? I go really. Let's look at the let's look at the what we just created. All right, this is it right here. I'm gonna open it up. Now you have to stuff this into the window that I'm doing you guys in over here. So give me one second and resize everything to fit in here. All right. As you can see, this is part of the picture, part of the painting. If I make this so it'll fit, fit visible. Uh, I have to make it smaller. There we go. All right, so there's one sheet of paper. This is even smaller. Okay, there's one sheet of paper, right? See how it has the little, these are crop marks. Come down here, there's Glenn himself. That's the next piece. And there's the other part of him. Now here's his little tushy. That's his front legs. And that's the grass. So what you would do is you print these all out. Then you decide how to put them together. One side has got to be cut. All right, this one, I would cut off this top, the left, and that's it on this piece. This is your upper left corner. So cut off the upper left, two white pieces. This one, you're gonna remove the top, and the left, top and left. Once you do that, you will then take this piece that you just cut with glint in it and lay it on top of this one and line it up with this white underneath it. You're gonna line up the mountains, line up his back, line up the, the top and bottom and tape it. Do the same with this guy. You, you're gonna, you left this piece and you left the bottom. This guy cut the top, cut the right side, leave the bottom. So you're going to leave, let's see, in this side, you're going to cut this off. You're cutting three sides on the last piece. You don't want the left, you don't want the top, you don't want the right. All you want is the bottom. So you're going to cut that off, lay it on top of this one, line them up, tape it down. Same thing on the bottom. Get rid of the pieces you don't need. You don't need anything here because you, you've kept the bottom, so you don't need the top, you don't need this. You're going to keep this side because that's what the other side's going to hook to, and you don't need the bottom. All right? That's all I got for you guys. I can't make it any simpler, I don't think. Who knows? All right, that's it for now. Did it in under 20 minutes. I'm so proud of myself. That's my new goal. Bye, everyone. Comments below.